Hi, and welcome to the Lazada Sustainability Academy. Through this program, we hope to share with you the necessary knowledge to future-proof and transform your businesses sustainably. I'm your host, Yongsi from Lazada. In recent years, energy efficiency has become the talk of town, and for good reason. It's all about optimizing energy usage and minimizing waste, which in turn can significantly impact how SME operates. Today, we have Dr. Tian Xiong with us to explore how energy efficiency could play a role in enhancing bottom line for your business. Dr. Tian Xiong is a sustainability partner at the Singapore Environment Council, which is a non profit organization which facilitates and coordinates environmental causes in Singapore. She specializes in the measurement of carbon emissions and the utilization of various ESG standards and frameworks. In her daily work, she guides her clients in formulating ambitious net zero goals and fortifying their strategic roadmap toward achieving sustainable outcomes. Welcome Dr. Tian Xiong and thank you for joining us today. Thank you Yongxi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to discuss how energy efficiency can benefit SMEs and contribute to their bottom line. Great. So if I may start with the first question, so what does energy efficiency really mean and how does it relate to the context of our SMEs? Okay, thank you for your question. So energy efficiency refers to use less energy, accomplishment, the same tasks and achieve the same output. So in the context of the SMEs, it's about finding ways to optimize the energy usage in their operations, facilities, and the manufacturing processes. So just for a very small example, SMEs often operate on a very limited budgets. So the energy expense can be a very significant portion of the operational cost. By saving this kind of a cost, it will enhance their bottom line. And also this can reduce their carbon footprint and environmental impact by using less energy and adopting some new uh, cleaner energy sources that can enhance their reputations of SMEs. So to enhance their reputation, the SMEs can use as a marketing tool to attract the environmentally conscious customers and partners involved in their business. Okay, the last one is the regulations and incentives. There are so many regulations now in the marketplace to encourage the energy efficiency and reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. So to comply with this kind of the regulations can prevent fines and even can get the government support grant. Just to take the Singapore as the example, we have the Energy Efficiency Fund from NEA, in short, E2F. So this fund, it consists of five different grants to support the business with their industry facilities to improve their energy efficiency. Just the, the five grants is about three process in the energy part. The first one is to identify your energy efficiency. It's you, for example, the energy assessment and the resource efficient design. And the second part is the implement. Implement means that how the business adopt the new energy efficient technologies and the, how they use the low global warming potential refrigerants chillers. And the last part is the monitoring, how the business monitor the energy management information and system. So all of this can enhance the SME's bottom line. Thanks, Yongxi. So, um, Dr. Tian Xiong, you mentioned about incentives, grants, so that caught my attention. So what could be some of the key benefits of implement, implementing energy saving measures in some of our business operations, um, perhaps more on the cost saving side of things? Uh, yes, implementing the energy saving measures can result in uh, several cost saving benefits for SMEs. Uh, the first one I think is it will lower the utility bills for the SMEs. This will directly contribute to save the co cost and to get the uh, bottom line enhanced. And the second one is that they can uh, minimize the maintenance and the repair cost by extending the lifespan of the equipment and the machine because they are used less to save the energy. And the third one is 
uh, like the energy cost can be subject to the fluctuation in the global energy market. We know now the electricity fee increased a lot. If you can reduce your energy consumption and maybe adopt some new technologies, the renewable sources, then your business may like mitigate the risk of this kind of the unstable energy price, which will impact their bottom line. And the next one I think is the uh, reduce the waste and the environmental compliance cost. If you save the energy, you also save the waste. This can seal your waste treatment cost. And last but not least, as, as we, what we discussed before in the first question, it can enhance the company's reputation. This will attract more customers, more partners to help your business in the next stage and to seal your cost, enhance your bottom line. Thanks. So now that we have understand what is the meaning of energy efficiency and its benefits, uh, Dr. Tinsho, maybe you can share about more about how businesses can identify areas of um, energy inefficiencies and prioritize areas for improvement? So how to identify the energy inefficiencies? It begins with engaging a third-party auditor to conduct an energy assessment. And this is also the first part of the E2F fund. They will uh, like uh, fund for like 50, up to 50% of the money to help the SMEs to do this. This involves like analyzing the energy consumption data, inspecting the facilities, and understanding the operational processes. So usually the auditor will analyze the historical utility bills for the energy consumption and perform on-site inspections and use the very specialized equipment like thermal imaging cameras to identify the areas of the energy wastage. And once the inefficiencies are identified, businesses should prioritize the improvements based on factors like the energy and cost savings potential, the payback period, and the impact on the overall operations. So uh, based on that, the business needs to establish clear energy efficient goals. Because you need to set the goals, then you can take the action plans. So these goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, and relevant. Of course, it needs to be evaluated and reviewed year by year to enhance your target, your action, to make sure you can achieve the goals you set. So now that we are able to identify our areas of improvement, how about solutions? Uh, what are some effective technologies and tactics that can be employed to maximize efficiency? So SMEs can uh, leverage various uh, technologies and techniques, uh, techniques to bolster their energy efficiency. So this includes, for example, uh, the energy efficient lighting, just to replace the lightings of the facilities with LED lights to reduce their energy consumption. Also, another point is to upgrading their heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. It is a very useful technique. Just to take one of our clients as an example, the retrofitting of the new chiller of their air con to improve the energy efficiency and reduce their energy consumption. Besides, for SMEs, they also can optimize their production processes. They can use the energy management system, in short, EMS, and adopt the renewable energy resources like solar panel on your roof. And you also can get the electricity from the wind, from hydro, geothermal, and also for your vehicles in your SMEs, uh, you can use the biofuels for your vehicles or the electricity for your vehicles instead of the uh, gasoline to maximize your energy efficiency in your organization. I think when we talk about energy consumption in businesses, we start to think about the people using it. So how can employee engagement and awareness contribute to improving energy efficiency and the overall cost savings? Oh, yeah. The employee engagement is very important in achieving the energy efficiency goals because as we uh, discussed before, we need to set the goals and employees is the one who achieve the goals. So business owners should first educate and involve their employees in energy saving initiatives through some training programs or regular communications by emails, like by meetings, 
uh, all can uh, work for it. So for example, they need to conduct the programs to educate employees about energy conservation and sustainability goals, then to help them to understand the link between the energy efficiency and the cost savings. This will broaden their environmental benefits and enhance the bottom line of their business. So when employees understand the importance of the energy efficiency, they are more likely to take the actions. They will contribute to the cost savings, such as they will turn off the lights, computers and equipment when not in use, and close the doors and the windows to maintain the comfortable indoor temperature which by the air con. These small actions collectively lead to the energy savings. Thanks, Yongxi. So finally, thanks for sharing the wonderful insights. Um, could you maybe share some success stories of SMEs who have significantly enhanced their bottom line through energy efficiency measures? Uh, first, I will highlight MNC as an example. Let's take a real estate developer company as the uh, one. So their sustainability efforts lead to the reduction in energy intensity by 43% and their water intensity by 52%. This resulting in the 54% reduction in the CO2 emission intensity and savings of Singapore dollar 320 million. Just imagine how 320 million Singapore dollar can do for their business. And then we go for the SMEs. So for SMEs, we also have some uh, case studies. One SME, they replaced their air compressors and fluorescent lighting with high efficiency with reliable speed air compressors and LED light. This will achieve a 100k Singapore dollar annual cost savings and it can reduce 330 tons of the CO2 emission. And another example also from SME, they retrofitted their air, air compressor and their light with energy efficient air compressors and LED lightings. This achievement saves their 200 megawatts of annual energy reduction, and it can save their 55k annual cost savings. All of these case studies can say that as long as we can start from a very small point, from the air compressor and the light, we can achieve like more than around like 20k to 100k savings for SME. This can do a lot for SME business and enhance their bottom line. Thank you, Yongxi. Thank you, Dr. Xiong. Certainly hope these examples could further encourage our SMEs to adopt more energy-efficient practices. And with that comes the end of our conversation. Uh, I think we can all agree that energy efficiency is no longer just a buzzword, but it's a necessity. I think the advantages of saving money, environmental stewardship, and increased productivity cannot be ignored. Um, by embracing the power of energy efficiency technologies, we hope that our SMEs can elevate both the bottom line and their commitment to a sustainable future. So to our valued audience, we hope you have enjoyed today's conversation. Please remember to stay tuned for the upcoming episode of Lazada Sustainability Academy. Bye.